I'm joined by Peter Brodnicki, the Chief Executive of the Mortgage Advice Bureau. Very good to have you with us. How have you found the day so far? Uh, yeah, excellent. You know, I always support these sort of events and um, it's interesting, it's a new venue, so um, it's always a risk of losing a few people, but uh, you know, it was a good year last year. This year is sort of maybe a little bit under, but some good quality people we've spoken to today. Tell us a bit about the Mortgage Advice Bureau. Who are you and what are you about? Uh, Mortgage Advice Bureau, we're um, a bit unusual really. Um, we're a broker, but to, to a larger extent, we're now a network and quite a sizable one. So we've probably got over sort of 500 or so brokers uh, nationally. Um, and, you know, uh, our, our AR partners uh, can choose to trade as MAB, but we're traditionally a network, but a, a very full support network. We're sort of more of a strategic partner for businesses than maybe just a network. Uh, so, um, and you've been going for quite some time. How have yeah. you seen things change, evolve, perhaps go uphill or downhill in that time? Yeah, it's quite interesting. I mean, the last four or five years, I think, have sharpened people up a lot. So um, it's an opportunity to stand out from the crowd. It's an opportunity to increase your market share and, and diversify and get into other products that maybe you weren't as sharp as. And you know, that's what today's about, getting brokers to come in and you know, talk to protection providers, bridging people, make sure they're maximising the opportunities in all the income streams. So um, you know, it's good for people to continue doing that. You know, we mustn't rest on our laurels and hope for the market to improve. There's plenty more opportunity out there. Well, talking of the market improving, what are the biggest challenges that you're seeing people facing at the moment? Yeah, I think a lot of them are just trying to work out their business model and, and maybe how they can grow their businesses. You know, some of them, you know, depending where they've come from, some are work of estate agents, some are work to their client banks, and how do they grow those clients? banks and um, it's quite interesting today you know one of the uh, the work uh, the breakout sessions the, uh, the seminar sessions we uh, had a protection area and a lot of the brokers were saying they're just not trained enough on that you know they've sort of some of them have lost the skills some of them have come into the industry never had the skills like they did back in the 80s and 90s um, and that's clearly still one of the biggest areas of opportunity you know the, the gap in protection the opportunities for protection never been higher so um, it's an area as a company we focus on very very strongly and throw a lot of resource to, to help people build a protection culture in their business and bring those skills back, um, which maybe are lacking at the moment. I know you were involved in this event in the Expo last year. How have things changed for you as a company in the past 12 months? Probably the most exciting year for us, um, you know, ever. Um, you know, we, we, we've grown in, uh, in advisor numbers and turnover by probably near a 60%. Um, it's been a year where we've made some major acquisitions. Um, a year where we've launched um, a dedicated network for the new build sector, which we see, you know, as growing quite significantly, which encapsulates new build and, and self build, custom build, affordable housing. These are all sectors that are very important to the market and are set to grow and targeted to grow. And it's one sector we weren't in, so it's an area we've grown in significantly this year. Um, we've now got over 800 estate agents as introducers to us. We're very big in that sector, and a lot of our brokers now. Are focusing and, and driving business out of that out of that too so uh, it's been a massive year for us a record year in many ways a hard year to get all these things and all that change bedded in but we're really looking forward to next year because all those things should come to fruition and i'm also hoping for a, you know, a bit more of a positive year in terms of lending next year as well well talking of the changes and the ways things are moving forward have you seen any new trends in the past 12 months that perhaps you hadn't seen before in terms of first-time buyers in terms of the way people are kind of accessing the market in ways that perhaps weren't before yeah i'm mean, still very very tough for first time buyers obviously and you know you need that to get the market stimulated and moving um i mean obviously you know one of the things is you know we've got involved with is affordable housing we acquired an affordable housing broker and that's been a trend you know you've seen a lot of first time buyers now move into that so a lot of people are aware of shared equity uh type deals and um uh, affordable housing i think what people think is a um uh, is more to do like a council home it's far from that it's evolved a lot of product innovation um, and if you look at the number of house sales last year, uh, uh, new build house sales, about 100,000 or so, uh, 37,000 were actually classed as affordable housing. And probably 80% of those were pretty much for the first time buyer, the rest were for maybe home movers. So, you know, that's, that's been a, a growing sector and I think that will expand um, and it will give, um, you know, a lot of first time buyers access through government schemes and funded schemes. Um, uh, like new buy to, to get into that sector. So I think that's, that's where the first time buyer area has probably got more, more hope to grow. Apart from that, you know, unless the lenders really loosen up criteria, which isn't going to happen because regulation, like it or not, and there for the right reasons, is stifling the market. Um, you know, even with um, the, the additional funding for lending that lenders have, it's not going to open up the, the, the higher loan to value lending, which needs to occur um, uh, to get more buyers back into the market. 
um, because you can't just keep focusing on the 50, 60, 70% loan to value. You know, things like interest only um, and, um, you know, have taken a chunk out of the market um, and um, self-certification, things like that. You know, these are all things that, as they get removed or con you know, restricted in the market, restrict buyers from coming in and moving. So, you know, and loan to value being another one of those things. So um, there's a limit to what the market can do without that having some flexibility. Thank you very much for talking to us.